Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about finding limits algebraically. So when I evaluate a limit algebraically, I'm always first going to plug the number that I'm approaching for my limit in for whatever variable I'm looking at and just solve and see what I get. When I do that, one of four things will happen that will determine if I need to do any more work or what my answer is. So the first thing that happens is I plug in my numbers and I get an answer. Perfect. I get a number over a number. There's my answer. I'm good to go. The second thing that can happen is once I've plugged in my numbers and evaluated, I end up with zero over zero. This is an indeterminate form and means that I need to do more math. That means that I need to either factor, rationalize, combine, simplify, etc. something to change what that expression looks like and then reevaluate that limit again. The third thing that can happen is once I've plugged in my numbers, I end up with a number over zero, five over zero, eight over zero, whatever, a something number over zero. This means that the limit does not exist. That's a DNE limit. The fourth thing that can happen once I've plugged in my numbers is I end up with zero over a number. 0 over 1, 0 over 5, 0 over negative 20. That means that my limit is just 0 and I don't have to do any more work. Let's look at a couple of examples with each of those scenarios. Number 1, the limit as x approaches 1 of 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 2. So the first thing I'm always going to do is plug that number that I'm approaching in for the variable. So I'm going to have 2 times 1 plus 1 over 3 times 1 minus 2. And I'm just going to evaluate here. So in my new numerator I get 3, in the denominator I get 1, so my answer here is just 3, no need to do any more work. Number 2, the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x cubed plus 8 over x squared minus 4. So again, the first thing that I'm going to do is plug negative 2 in for x. So I have negative 2 cubed plus 8 over negative 2 squared minus 4. In the numerator, this is going to be negative 8 plus 8, so that's 0, and in the denominator I'm going to have 4 minus 4. So so that's also zero. So this is the case where I have an indeterminate form. I have to do more math. I have to do something to this expression to get things to cancel out and then try plugging in that negative two again. So I'm first going to just rewrite the problem. And when I look at this expression, I can see that the numerator is a sum of cubes. So I can factor that. And the denominator is a difference of two squares. So I can factor that as well. When I rewrite this expression before I start simplifying, it's very important that you keep rewriting your limit piece in the beginning. You can't just drop the limit piece and rewrite the expression. You have to keep rewriting the limit piece until you plug in numbers. That's why I was allowed to drop the limit here, but I'm not going to drop the limit just yet here. In the numerator, when I factor a sum of cubes, I set up a small set of parentheses and a bigger set of parentheses. I know the signs in the parentheses are same opposite positive as what was already in the numerator. So I'm gonna have same opposite positive. Now I just have to figure out the terms that go in each of these. This first term is always the cube root of the first term, so that's x. This second term is always the cube root of the second term, so that's 2. The first term in that bigger set of parentheses is this term squared. This middle term is a combination of these two terms, so 2x. And that last term is this second term squared, so 4. In the denominator, I have a difference of two squares, so I know that's just x plus 2 and x minus 2. And now I can see that my x plus 2 in the numerator cancels with the x plus 2 in the denominator. So now I can evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 2 of what I have left over. So x squared minus 2x plus 4 over x minus 2. Now I'm going to plug the negative 2 in for x. And since I'm doing that, I can drop that limit in the front. So negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Bring that plus 4 over. And then in the denominator, I have negative 2 minus 2, so that's negative 4. So now this becomes 12 over negative 4, so my answer is negative 3. Number 3, the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 1 over x minus 2. I always have to plug in that number first and see what's going on. So if I plug a 2 in, 2 cubed is 8 minus 1 is 7, over 2 minus 2 is 0. This is the case where I have a number over 0, so that means my limit does not exist. This is a DNE limit. Number four, the limit as x approaches negative three of x squared plus 4x plus 3 over x squared minus 3. I am first going to plug in negative 3 for x. So negative 3 squared is 9. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. I have that plus 3. And in the denominator, negative 3 squared is 9 
minus 3. 9 minus 12 plus 3 is going to give me 0, and then the denominator is 6. So since I have 0 over a number, the limit here is just 0. Number 5. The limit as x approaches 4 of the square root of x plus 5 minus 3 over x minus 4. So first things first, I'm going to plug in 4 for x. So I have the square root of 4 plus 5 minus 3 over 4 minus 4. In the numerator, 4 plus 5 is 9, and I know the square root of 9 is 3. So my numerator is going to be 0, 3 minus 3, and then denominator I also have 0. So this is that indeterminate form. I need to do more math here. Whenever I have a radical that's giving me an indeterminate form, what I'm going to want to do is multiply this whole thing by the conjugate of the radical piece. So I'm going to rewrite that original problem, and I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this expression by the conjugate of the numerator. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of x plus 5 plus 3, and whatever I multiply in the numerator, I also need to multiply in the denominator. When I do this multiplication, I still carry over my limit because I'm not evaluating just yet. In the numerator, I'm pretty much just foiling or just multiplying two binomials. So I have rad x plus 5 times rad x plus 5. That's just going to be x plus 5. My outer two terms are going to give me 3 rad x plus 5. And my inner two terms are going to give me negative 3 rad x plus 5. So those two terms just cancel each other out. Next, I need to pull, multiply the negative 3 and the positive 3. So that's going to give me a negative 9. So there's my numerator. In the denominator, I'm not going to multiply these out. I'm going to leave this as x minus 4 in parentheses and rad x plus 5 plus 3 in parentheses. The goal of multiplying by the conjugate in this example is to have things cancel in the numerator so it looks a little bit smaller. But now when I go to rewrite my whole expression for one more time, you'll see that something's going to cancel. So now that this is rewritten, I can see that the x minus 4 in the numerator cancels with the x minus 4 in the denominator, leaving me with 1 over the square root of x plus 5 plus 3. Now that this has been simplified, I'm going to plug the 4 in for x, and hopefully I'm going to get an answer now. So I have the square root of 4 plus 5 plus 3 in the denominator. The square root of 4 plus 5 is the square root of 9, so that's 3, and 3 plus 3 is 6. So the answer to this question is 1 sixth. That's it for finding limits algebraically. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you'd like a copy of this worksheet and you are not one of my students, you can send us an email and I'll leave that email in the description as well. Hope you have a great day.